Have you ever felt stressed, discouraged, down mood, overwhelmed when faced with some sort of hardship? Whether it be school projects, school assignments, or something that life brings to you. Today, I want to share about my journey in the field of creativity and how creativity of movement, also known as dance, has had its benefit for me when I've been faced with challenges, how it has helped me to overcome difficulties by means of the creative thought process, how through the facilitation of artistically conceptualizing approaches to create a performance, a show, has helped me both biologically, mentally, to overcome the sense of discourage, reduce that overwhelming onset of stress, to allow me to enjoy the process, face the challenges, and gain further growth through it all. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexander Thou. I'm a choreographer, performer, director, co-founder of the Performing Arts at Seoul Music and Performing Arts Academy, the founder of Lyricist Dance Company. And I, for fun, got my doctorate in occupational therapy. And today, I hope to move you share my story of dance and, as a modality, how it has helped me find value in challenges I've faced on my journey through life, how creativity in the arts has helped me find my potential, my hidden potential, characteristics I've never knew before, and how it surfaced during phases of my life. What seems so hard now will someday be your warm-up. In 1992, when I started dancing, Hip-hop was a culture that I was drawn to. Yes, a small part of American culture during that time, but not the mainstream culture, where people would go to baseball games, eat hot dogs, barbecues, or even wear shoes inside the house. Those types of things. Born Vietnamese American, hip-hop culture was accepting of me. No prejudice, no discrimination, because it was meant for all. There were no color lines. So breakdancing was the first, thing, first dance I learned, introduced to me by my older brother. We learned in our garage, and immediately I was drawn to it. More than sports or any other physical activity you do in school, like running, jogging, playing football, breaking was a new form of dance compared to all other forms of dance, such as classical ballet, jazz, ballroom dancing. So at that time, for breakdancing, there are no studios to learn in. To learn breakdancing, literally, you have to learn on the streets. We would attend what is called sessions or ciphers, where these breakdancing sessions would happen in an abandoned building so that we don't get caught by the police. We would watch other breakdancers, basically pioneers of breakdancing at the time, so that we watched directly from them, and that's how we learned. A study. 2007, found that hip-hop dancing improved energy, increased mood, and lowered stress in ways similar to aerobic exercises, Time Magazine, 2024. In breaking, as part of hip-hop culture, it was all about being an individual, being unique, stand out, be different, be your own, basically be creative. You would get called out, a biter, for copying other people. So at that time, there are no dance covers. So already then, the constant introduction of being creative was injected into my mindset from such a young age. I learned technique, fundamentals. However, your groove, your flavor, however you showcase your style was unique to you. How you listened to the music and how you danced to it was yours. That's what creativity did so that I set myself apart from others. But however, under hip-hop, breaking was such, seen as a disruption to society. Hip-hop culture was about giving people a voice to speak up against oppression. Minorities used breakdancing as a form of expression through movement. So compared to our other dance forms, such as ballet, contemporary dance, which are very elegant, pristine, seen in theaters, breaking was perceived differently against the norm, not socially accepted. Also in hip-hop culture, 
has the mindset of a family. So you would practice as a crew. You would practice together, support one another through the journey. And due to that time period, with a mix of street culture, gangs and gang violence, and hip-hop, this played an influential role in why hip-hop and breakdancing has so much competition. That's why you hear a lot of dance battle in hip-hop. And so that was to replace the violence that you see in the streets. I have no desire to prove anything by dancing. I just dance. Fred Astaire. So I made my way to a dance crew, where at the time it was hip-hop dancing, but in a very synchronized way. I call it choreography dancing. So I auditioned into this group when I got to the university. And same, the method of training was not in a studio. You work together. There were no courses at the dance department in the university. It had, it had a crew mentality, just like breaking. However, what was different was having to look like your other members in your group. But as a whole, as a group, we had to maintain our uniqueness and be different, which was still the common denominator, an important element in hip-hop culture. We entered multiple dance competitions every year. Back then, there were about three, four major competitions and a few small ones in California. And to prepare for these competitions, we would have what's called Hell Week. We would rehearse every day, say 7 p.m. to about 3, 4 in the morning, leading up to the competition. And that's after a full day of classes. And then some of us would go to school full time, work part time, and our rehearsals would happen outdoor. We didn't have a studio. Uh, we didn't have some of the basic necessities as a dance team. So we would rehearse out in the cold, whether it's hot, raining, humid, dark, no lights. We had to be resilient and train under these conditions. We weren't dancing to make money. At the time, there were no Instagram, no TikTok to create viral videos. At this time, choreography and hip-hop dance had no framework, no framework to devise or learn from. So creativity allowed for possibilities. The opportunity was presented to us to be creative in how we presented our style of dance. So breakdancing back then was moving to the break that the DJ made. Hip-hop social dance was very rhythmical. There were funk styles that brought groove and soul to movements, emphasizing different aspects of the music besides just the bass beat. Choreography style, dancing, allowed us to create movements on many elements of a song created by the music producers, from the sound effects, words of the vocalists, or snares of the drums. And so my four years on the team, two years as a member, two years as a co-leader, we competed as a crew. We were champs for many competitions, also achieving top two, top three on occasions, and in only one time, placing fourth. Great dancers are not great because of their technique. They are great because of their passion. Martha Graham. I was fortunate. Dance came to me. I had no intrigue or even an ounce of awareness regarding breakdancing. Maybe knew a little bit about ballet at that age. And I remind you again, I was 12. I got lucky to have found my passion. This passion was a big reason why I danced. Passion for me was the fuel to which allowed me to dance intensely, rigorously, constantly, day in and day out. Passion helped, allowed me to push past the bumps and bruises, the late night rehearsals, the rehearsals to the early mornings. This is the reason why dance is so connected to the word passion, because dancers needed passion. Passion gave us this internal fuel. As hard as it was, and unpopular it was at that time, according to mass media. There were no social influencers in dance. And many dancers had hopes and dreams of becoming industry dancers. And this form of dance without a pathway of training like ballet, yet so demanding physically and mentally, consuming so much of your time, was all based on passion. But for me, 
Through these years of dancing on this choreography-based dance crew, I found something in me that blossomed even more from my time in the arts. I found my new passion, that was leadership. As I got more into dancing, I knew I liked being this role of leadership. This way, I can share my experience, give back to those, and support others in their dance journey. Building and creating, my dance was a means to an end. That was becoming a leader. In this role, I would learn how to connect. I had to unify a group of people and share my experiences with others so it allows them to grow. I took steps to learn to be a leader in the arts. So I started out as a member. Then I led a small group of people in our team choreographing breakdancing routines for our competition sets. And that was my strength at the time. Then I stepped up and tried choreographing general dance moves. And these general dance choreographies that helped me make these small steps into leadership roles to becoming our overall leader. Being creative was the foundation to getting me there. Can't lead if I'm not strong creatively. Can't be creative if I can't lead. A group dynamic is hard, but I love the chance to pull a group together, to work towards a common goal. Managing different personalities by means of creativity, all while ensuring the team maintained a high level of artistry so we continue winning. And all of this, at the same time, I had to maintain academically. My grades had to maintain a certain level, didn't want to waste money at the university. And I also worked part-time to build my resume to enter the medical university. So after undergrad and a few years later, I received my master's degree and I got my doctorate in occupational therapy, an allied health profession utilizing daily life activities of an individual to help them regain independence in life. Movement brings meaning to one's life, so movement was my specialty both medically and artistically. And through movement, I can help others. Again, to me, this was leadership. This was my passion. I share this side of me because in health, there are structures, there are systems and formulas. You have to follow in the medical system. You have to follow procedures. So for example, in occupational therapy, I learned about the scapulohumeral rhythm. So the scapula is this bone, and this, this bone called the humerus, they have to move in conjunction together. So the, scap the scapula would upwardly rotate while the shoulder does what's called shoulder flexion. What's amazing was that this health profession allowed me to be creative to help an injured shoulder of a patient move accordingly so they recover well and regain functional independence. So imagine this, trying to be motivated by lifting a weight uh, compared to moving your arm in relation to an activity that brings you meaning. So for instance, uh, a patient that is a painter, instead of having him use a weight not exciting, I would have him use paint. I would make him paint. In that way, that's his motivation. So he would move in the scapulohumeral rhythm that I need for his functional recovery, yet since his occupation was painting that brings him meaning, it motivated him more to recover much faster than just lifting a little weight. So systems and procedures proved, provided me much structure when creativity helped me to think outside the box because not all problems can be solved with a formula. And all this happened, again, all while I restarted and managed a professional dance company called Modern Legacy. And my claim to fame, our team being on this television show, and we made it to top three. To be creative means to be in love with life. You can be creative only if you love life enough that you want to enhance its beauty. You want to bring a little bit more music to it, a little bit more poetry to it, and a little bit more dance to it. Oh, show. Talk about a challenging sequence of events. It was and still is my journey. From hip hop, breaking, to dance crew, to choreography-based dancing, creativity through the arts have helped me find my potential. The constant facilitation of thinking artistically provided me a chance to grow my mindset, utilizing creativity 
in a methodical manner. I've choreographed for the famous song, on the famous songs of the late great Jin Kum Sun. I've directed and led a production team in creating some stage shows. I've created a performing arts academy for young students and talents so they can blossom through creative dance education. I'm leading a dance company now with members who show great potential in the arts, supporting them in their development as a teacher, provide guidance as a choreographer, eliciting creativity out of my members so they can get past and do the challenges of this journey. So in closing, I would like to share something that hit home for me uh, from Dr. Joe Dispenza, his notion of cause-effect, not cause and effect. This notion of cause-effect is what creativity through movement was for me. It allows for the mind and body, our soul connection, by creating something, meaning that we made something unknown, unbeknownst to us previously, this surprise effect produced from within us. It can start out small, say hitting a dance pose, and then when we continue to create, it becomes larger, such as standing on the stage at TEDxFTU. We become more in awe, making us feel good, making us feel alive when overcoming a challenge. This is a natural stage of being. It comes from inside us, does not require something external to tell us to change our state of being. I won't give up.